Good evening. Welcome to Athens City Council. Um, this is a kind of a hybrid evening. We're, we, uh, a hybrid, a hybrid evening, yeah. We're, we're going to, this is a, a regular agenda night, um, but we're going to have an executive session. Uh, we're going to be involved in some discussions um, about um, many things. So um, a lot going on. First of all, we're going to establish a quorum um, with all members present. That's a quorum and um, disposition of minutes. The regular session of City Council held November 5th, 2012. Do we have a motion to accept those minutes? I motion to accept the regular minutes. A second? A second. Okay. All those in favor of accepting those minutes, signify by saying aye. Aye. Minutes are accepted. Uh, communications. Uh, the president doesn't have any mayor. Um, the only thing I'd like to bring up is that uh, let's see, that's two Fridays from now, uh, twelve fourteen. Uh, we're going to have our employee recognition luncheon at eleven thirty at the community center. Uh, that's to let you know that first of all, the offices will be closed for that, and second of all, you're invited, so you can uh, at least smooth with and hang out with our employees and see what they've accomplished. So you, you're all invited. And that's all um, I have. Service safety director? At this and point, no, you just watch out for Santa and every Wednesday and Saturday and the horse and buggy rides. And that's Our treasurer is here tonight. I, I do have the interest income report. Do you want that now? Or is it good or bad? Good. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the uh, way in the middle. We could we could go ahead and do that now. Rather okay. than okay. that. This is second and third quarter together. Um, the interest income year to date is now 93,720 Uh The projected is 123,590. We um, will probably <coughs> make just about that because I'll withdraw a couple of CDs at the end of the year. The interest rates are still not significantly improved, um, but plan to take advantage of them as soon as they do. It's just pretty much holding steady, so. Um, they're still passing around. Okay. Anybody at this end have a question about the report? And, and what's attached is just the monthly bank reconciliation. It's just copies for your reference. We are improving. Yes. In, in terms of total overall yes. fund availability, yes. That's always good. <laughs> any other questions or comments? The Treasurer, do you want to make any further comments? I, no? Okay. Yes, there's any questions. We have the Treasurer's that. report. Uh, we gladly accept it. And um, if anybody has questions later, please let us know. And, uh, Talk to Mary Ann McCullough. Okay, uh, law director line. I've had no report tonight, Mr. President. Have we? Um, and um, so we're going to move into executive session to talk about some collecting bar collective bargaining issues. Um, to make it easier, we're going to move council and elected officials down to the uh, council chambers uh, rather than ask all of our audience to get up and wait out in the cold. So um, we anticipate this won't be a, a long session, but um, we do need to do it. And so uh, could I have a motion to move into executive session? I motion that we move into executive session with all council members, Pat Lang, the administration of uh, Paul and Paula, and HR. The personnel director. Yeah. Personnel director. And our treasurer. And our treasurer. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to move into um, executive session. Um, we have to, we take votes individually. Aye. 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 
Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. We will uh, be gone for a few minutes. Enjoy yourselves. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you for waiting. Uh, council is back from our, dis our discussion of some collecting bargaining, collective bargaining issues, uh, which will um, soon appear on our agenda. Do we have um, an amendment? I would make a motion to amend the agenda tonight to include the uh, bargaining. Okay. Yes, we go. Um, we have a motion and a second um, we, uh, to include the issues that we're, we discussed in the executive session about uh, collective bargaining with our um, employees in the code office. Um, all those in favor of this amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Same sign. Okay. So the, amenda, the agenda is amended. We now have ordinance, what is that? What does that mean? 130, 134 um, has been added to our agenda. So uh, now we're going on with ordinances for second reading. Usually ordinances for second reading are that just it. They're read and no, uh, no action is taken. However, uh, the council members who introduced this ordinance may have some um, some comments or um, wishes that it move ahead. So we're going to go ahead with Ordinance 118.12, an ordinance amending Athens City Code Title 11, Business Regulations, Chapter 11.04, Bending, Peddling, and Soliciting, and Declaring an Emergency, introduced by Councilmember Patterson. Ordinance 12012, an ordinance providing for the issue for the issuance of not to exceed three hundred thousand dollars worth of notes by the city of Athens, Ohio, in anticipation of the issuance of bonds for the purpose of paying part of the cost of acquiring a new fire truck and related equipment and declaring an emergency. Introduced by Councilmember Nizer. Just Mayor, did, did we think this one needed to be suspended? I, I'm trying to remember which one we have to amend for the interest rate. Is that part of one of those? Uh, that, uh, that one doesn't need an amendment. Okay. The appropriation ordinance is amended. These notes are due on December 13th. So if you think it wise for us to settle tonight, I suppose we could. December 13th? About 13th. December 13th. is oh, after our next meeting. Right. We're having a special session. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have so. one ten. So I guess we can hold off now. Okay, we'll go, let go ahead. Ordinance one twenty one twelve, an ordinance providing for the issuance of not to exceed eight hundred thousand dollars of notes by the city of Athens, Ohio, in anticipation of the issuance of bonds for the purpose of paying part of the costs of improvements to this municipality's wastewater treatment plant and declaring an emergency. Ordinance 122.12, an ordinance adopting a fringe benefits package for non-union personnel within the city of Athens and repealing all ordinances inconsistent therewith and declaring an emergency. And yeah, Mr. President, I would uh, make a motion that uh, we consider an amendment for Ordinance 122.12. Second. Second. And the purpose of this amendment is to clarify uh, the language and the compensation and step increases. And I'm distributing text for council members to see. And our human resources director, Claudia Reagan, is here to help us um, with that. Okay, um, under section 21 compensation, uh, you'll see some adjustment amendments to it, uh, stating um, crossing off letter E, which is declaring that employees within certain 
ranges would receive a step increase. Um, later in today's meeting, you will see that we have changed the way the employees will be receiving pay increases, no longer having steps, so that language no longer needs to be incorporated. Um, and it also just clar clarifies, um, takes away that permanent part-time employees will not receive step increases every other year, but will just receive increases with the regular full-time employees. Um, and that, that's it. That's the only amendment in there. Okay. Anybody have questions about this amendment? All those in favor of the amend amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Okay, the um, ordinance has been amended and will be read for the first time next week. This, this is read for the first time. I'm sorry. You read for the second time. And now we go with ordinances for first reading. Ordinance 124.12, an ordinance amending ordinance 0. 0807 and the Athens City Code establishing salaries for Athens City Council introduced by Finance and Personnel Committee. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. We had discussion in our Finance and Personnel Committee meeting last week and uh, a range was discussed. And you might remember that this um, will be effective not this coming year, but it will commence on January 1, 2014. And what we're recommending is a 1% pay increase for council members, which will um, give council members um, between the range of $75 additional money, $75 to $90 additional money per year. Um, current pay range is about $7,500. Um, so that's the, uh, the first reading for this. Comments? No? No comments? Okay. Ordinance 125.12. An ordinance to make appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the City of Athens, Ohio during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2012. Again, Finance and Personnel Committee. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. We have um, been receiving uh, consistent information and I think very helpful information from city administration and from our auditor's office about our budget process this year. And this begins the first reading of three. We'll, uh, on the next three Monday nights, including a special session next Monday night, uh, we'll have the full three readings of the budget. And I'd like to turn to uh, Mayor Weil for some additional information on this. Okay, this is again is 025-12, a nice even number as we like it. Um, I got the results from most of the department heads in terms of what they want to see. Uh, the general budget, if you look down at the bottom, is $12.7 million, 12.745. Um, this is to reflect what we had last year uh, at the same time. Uh, 02511 was 11.97. So you can see we've gone up um, a little bit less than a million dollars. If you remember the report from the Kathy Heck, the city auditor, November 5th, is that we are, uh, our certified re resources for 2011 was 14.8 for the general fund. Um, in contrast, just so you know, uh, our revised appropriation, these are the appropriations that we've done over the, over the past year. Uh, again, every appropriation moves that budget back and forth. Uh, shows a 12.751, 12,000,000.751 for the general fund at, that, at this time. I'm looking at the uh, year-to-date reports from uh, uh, mid-November on that. We haven't really moved that much around in terms of appropriations since then. The total budget, if you go to the back end, of course, is $33.7 million. Again, the breakdown, if you look at it, has to do, of course, with the personnel. Uh, in the general fund, it's, it's under 80 percent, 77 percent, 0.5. The total budget, of course, is about 47 percent, but that's because, of, because you have some high-end uh, activities going on. In particular, Small Cities Grant, which will be doing the Oxbow Bridge, we put that in because we started that up last year, and this is just rolling through the project. Um, I added a few things in terms of a, uh, uh, getting a police cruiser. Uh, there's been a wish list for on a, police, a police officer. 
Um, some of the other things I haven't put in there are some of the other budget items uh, in terms of the issue one grant money for Columbus Road, which we plan to do. I'm trying to think what else I could cover at this point. I had stuck in the budget, of course, another household has this waste pickup. It's every other year, so that would come out of the sanitation 6, 760 budget. It's only about 15,000, so it's really small change compared to what you're going to see in the total budget, uh, which is, let's see, sanitation is running about 1.2, 1.3 million dollars. Um, let's see, other activities. Um, Again, we did discuss, if you remember, putting some money into the Transportation Assistance Fund, the 214, which, of course, is going to be our, our contribution to the, uh, the public transit system, as well as some of the pass-through for fare boxes. And um, what's the other one? Um, administration fare boxes and something else. Okay. Passes. Plus fares. Plus fares, yeah, passes, yes. Um, other than that, let's see, other changes were... That's, that's all I really need to cover right now, unless you have other questions. Uh, again, it's we're all within our reserves right now. Um, the meeting with uh, the our deputy auditor today, again, he's, he's citing about uh, two million carryover or in the black, which is good. Uh, and again, that's, that's his guesstimate at this point, but that, that looked uh, appropriate for me. Any questions? Yes. Um, I'd like to point out that the carryover that we have is from the, the city doing a really great job of budgeting and it's not because the state has increased government um, you know oh, yeah, services wow. or any of the things that the, that's coming from the state so though the state keeps kind of cutting us back I think the city is doing a really responsible job and I appreciate that thank you and, and again, we really, we really pushed hard on that with uh, my staff and administration. Um, it, it's, it's a shame because in one sense we, we kept squeezing them, squeezing them. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're right now trying to look and say, okay, have we actually fallen behind on some of the things which we should be replacing over time? Mm -hmm. um, and, and therefore, I, had, I put about 100000 into re uh, recreation because I know they need a... I've seen the picture of the truck. It's in bad shape. It looks like it's, it's green and it might be mole on it. I don't know what. <laughs> Um, or algae, I don't know. Um, we will, of course, have other uh, issues. We're still going to be starting up the wastewater treatment plant, of course, so that's going to, that's going to be in the mix as well, but that's further down the line. Um, so it's no thanks to the state, my essence. Oh, okay, no thanks to the state. No that's, thanks to the state, I agree with that. in spite of the state that we have been, you know, you've been extraordinarily creative and responsible about doing the budgeting, and we really appreciate it and the citizens should appreciate it, and they should complain to the state because they're only going to cut back more. Call the governor. Mm -hmm. Sir, I'll be quiet now. Okay. okay. Any other questions? I'm sorry. That's, uh, that's because it's project-related. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, I, the Sir Safe Director points out that if you notice the... Uh, the wheel tax, uh, 226, 225, um, what was the third one there you mentioned? Street Rehab. Street Rehab. Yeah, uh, many of those are zeroed out because we'll, we'll, when we do the authorization for the projects, we'll do the appropriations at the same time. Uh, with, we're, we're coming to that conclusion that maybe that methodology is better so we remember what we're doing We could, because we could appropriate the money later and then, or not, and then all of a sudden have to go into the design and engineering and uh, authorization for the project. And the idea is to put them all in at the same pro time as a project number. So we have numbers associated, project numbers associated with the appropriations and authorization. Um, it's a different mode. We'll see how well it works. I, I think it will work better. Otherwise, I wouldn't be trying it. But, uh, well, know, it we'll sounds see. like a better way of tracking things yes. by project and keeping ch and, and mm -hmm. for all of us to keep track of it. So that's appreciated. Yeah, it keeps the money out of the pot till we need it. Yep. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Moving on, Ordinance 126.12, an ordinance authorizing staffing levels, a non-union pay scale and slotting for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2013, and repealing all ordinances inconsistent therewith and declaring an emergency. Finance and personnel. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. We uh, did mention this last week in our finance committee meeting um, about non-union uh, pay or pay increases for non-union staff. 
and the um, what we're recommending is a three and a half percent pay increase. Um, two thirds of this would be coming from the general fund, and um, would cost I think a total for all of the employees slightly more than a hundred thousand a year. Um, but um, seems to be a very reasonable amount, um, and the non-union um, employees have not had a, a significant raise. for several years and this is in keeping with some of the other negotiated uh, pay increases that we've had with some of the other groups and any questions uh, our HR director is here also questions about this again moving on along <coughs> ordinance 127-12 in ordinance amending ordinance 01405, reallocating revenues from the city income tax and declaring an emergency. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Let me uh, turn to that one. We also talked about this at the um, our finance committee meeting last week and what we're doing is as you can see in the text of the um, this particular bill the um, city income tax that comes in there is a split of 85 percent of that and of that um, it had been at 74 percent went to the general fund we're now recommending a shift in that, that 73% um, of that would go to the general fund. And, and that 1% that comes off the uh, general fund then would go down to a transportation assistance fund, fund number 214. And it would designate uh, a steady stream, a consistent stream of money for our transportation expenses that we have within the city. More accurately reflects, I think, the commitment that the city has made uh, towards transportation expenses. This way we won't be having to, to appropriate all the time for special needs during the course of the year. And can you tell us approximately what that one percent um, would be? The deputy uh, auditor stated that's between eighty to ninety thousand dollars. I think he said he said about ninety five somewhere around there, but it will vary depending on the income tax. Um, and this, of course, is after the first um, proprietary stuff. When I say proprietary, it's really not proprietary. The stuff that was voted on in terms of the community center um, and recreation. Um, I think, what's the other one? The streets. These are ones that were voted by ballot to go into that pot of money. And therefore, that's the first stuff that comes out. If you look at it, see 6.6% uh, for streets deducted out of it. Streets rehabilitation, uh, community center, 6.6 percent, and then a 303 for the uh, recreation community center uh, operations. That comes out first. Uh, if you remember, the discussion was that's about uh, a little bit under 15 percent, I guess. Is that what we're hearing? And then the rest of it gets div divvied up into these percentages: general fund, streets, recreation, capital. And now, now we're moving one percent into transportation. Uh, again, it's coming out of the it's coming out of the general fund and going into transportation yes so so just to clarify I believe I understand this we're not spending actually spending more on transportation we're simply setting the money aside as it comes in through the tax revenue yes as opposed to how we do it now which is just take it out of the general fund usually do it ad it, hoc right? yes as, <laughs> as needed um, because it's now passed through um, we usually had some money coming in to us so we always had some cash flow well, we're, the stuff we have now will be cash flow too. We're talking about maybe on, on the side, if you look at the, uh, uh, the amount that's put in the appropriation bill, the 125 is about 200,000. Of that, it's about 40 of it is coming out of the fare box. Um, some of it comes out of, uh, again, it is another factor in there and I can't remember what it is. Uh, and some of it will be a, our contribution. Uh, I just signed off on a, a, an invoice for about 28,000, which is an in-kind match as well. Uh, that's for the rental of the bus garage and uh, certain facilities. So we always have to have some cash rolling through here. Um, the question, of course, is how much, and this will provide us with our contribution. Um, we may need more, but I'm hoping this with 1% will do what we need, and it because it's a stream. In the past, I, I backtracked, and I think I gave it to the, uh, the Finance Personnel Committee, the mixes that have occurred before. Somewhere about 20 years ago, there was actually a 
um, really about 38,000 set aside for transportation at that point, and that went on for several years. It was a set amount. Um, that's when the general fund was running about 64 percent, and the, the breakdown was interesting because you had, you know, s general fund, uh, and you worked your way down, then just everything left got dumped into another pool. Uh, it was a different way of doing things, but again, that was a fixed amount up to a certain point. Uh, we're much higher than that, and uh, I could get you that if you really needed. Okay. That's fine. Thanks. I have one clarification, if it's possible to go back to 126.12, because I know the HR director has put a lot of work into <laughs> <laughs> a lot of detailed yeah, papers that, that you all have, and I said, oh, that was with the last so. ordinance. Oh. <laughs> and, and so what I wanted to draw council members' attention to, you don't have to read it in depth tonight, because we do have additional readings, but what she's done is, um, and we've seen this from year to year, there are title clarifications, and clean up and the staffing listing. So um, if you do, you can look through it, review it if you have any questions. But as I understand it, I think that's the, the, the main thing. And then also <coughs> some clarification on um, positions no longer used, like our seasonal workers. Right. And then um, also then um, some work on pay ranges mm -hmm. rather than steps. So I, I'd like to draw on her expertise while we have Claudia here tonight. So I, I apologize if I skipped over that. No, that's fine. Um, yes, most of it is um, updating and clarification of things that have been in place for some time that just never were addressed in the ordinance. Um, another um, change is uh, the pay range that you'll see on this page. Um, we are eliminating the step increases. Um, Mostly for the reason it, it was really hard to keep track of who got a step increase when um, looking past in the past pay ordinances from back to 2007, it seemed that a lot of these step ranges were receiving not only step increases but the percentage as declared by council, which we had ranges one through five moving very quickly through the range and then the management supervisory roles that were six through nine were not moving as evenly because those ranges weren't being updated as um, as living expenses, you know, were being analyzed for everybody. Um, so the mayor had asked me to reach out to other cities similar to Athens. I did that. I reached out to Oxford, Kent, and Bowling Green, and um, this scale is something similar that Oxford uses and has been very beneficial. They've had it in place for a long time. Um, so it clarifies the ranges and evenly spaces them out based on job responsibilities, not on who's within the position, more or less. Um, and then you'll also see that the pay scale here just clarifies who's in what department, and I think just makes it much simpler to read and know who's where. Um, so that, that's pretty much the big changes. Um, so it'll be quite different if you look to the 2012 ordinance that we did last year in December. But um, I think it's just, I think it's simpler, and. Um, I think this is exactly what the city, the city for the non-union employees needs. So, any questions on that? I just make a comment, Claudia. Sure. I didn't see 2012, and I caught on to this pretty quickly. So oh, good. It was. Good. It's really helpful and good. certainly expresses, I think, what you just said pretty well. Great. Good to hear. Thank you. Good. Yes. Since we do have you here, could you um, tell us about the changes in? I think I guess it's the internal services. That's okay. <laughs> um, anything specific or? Um, it might be a typo, but I see chief information officer half time and then also a full time. And then I, th I think there's a new. Um, oh, okay. Okay. An increase from half to, to full. Right. So. Um, yeah, it, it probably is just a typo. The internal service um, chief information officer used to be half council, half um, under the mayor's office. Um, the chief information officer is going to meet, be moved permanently onto, onto um, the mayor's staff. So uh, directly answering to the service safety director. So that's why that is. But yes, that should be eliminated. So thank you. Good catch. Um, and then the IT technician. Um, we've been given some advice that it potentially could be a full-time position. So. We're allocating that if we want to make that decision, it's available, but as of right now, it will remain at a half-time position. Okay. So. And that position itself is relatively new also. Yes, that, 
It is, it's existed, but it's only been a permanent part-time as far as staffing levels for a year now. Yeah. But it is relatively new, yes. Okay. We, we have a consultant looking at our IT des, uh, designs and needs right now. Um, the hope is, one of the first recommendations he had is that you probably do need two full-time people. Um, that's not official because he still has yet to interview all the stakeholders and everything like that. But just looking at the, the quantity of, uh, of you know, computers and peripherals and everything else, he's saying, you know, this is, this is uh, we have a pretty big operation here. Um, and again, he's, he's just in a preliminary Right, so. Right, but I think you will be meeting at least with council or your, who you designate with, will be for that event. If you haven't made an appointment ready, I assume somebody has. No, they, they weren't included. He started with the other department heads. Okay. First, so. um, and again, really, it's just to look at our overall system, how we how we set up, what uh, whether we have efficiencies, whether we're going in the right direction, uh, whether we need to, uh, uh, you know, realize this, there's actually, uh, you know, we have everything lumped in internal services right now. The question is, do we want to parse it out to internal services, which includes, like, essentially, that covers everything from, um, you know, cars to computers. Do we want to have that split off? And these are these are things, dialogues I have with other mayors. Uh, unfortunately, being the biggest city around here, they don't usually get that, uh, you know, the dialogue does not occur in Southeast Ohio. <laughs> it usually goes somewhere else when I'm talking to somebody much of a larger city, and therefore, it's, it's apples and oranges as well, so, but that's why we have somebody looking at what we have, just so we can get a, a little bit of a better fix on how things are working, how we have uh, use of our employees as well as use of our equipment and resources. Sounds like a good thing. Thanks. Trying. Other questions for Claudia? Thank uh, you, Chris. I, I want to thank you for all the work. Uh, okay. She worked with uh, Ray Hazlett, the deputy auditor, uh, auditor as well, quite a bit. Um, work out the inconsistencies and things that need to be dealt with. So it was a, a good collaboration. Okay. okay. Thank you for the catching. Ordinance 128.12. An ordinance amending ordinance 03408, establishing the allocation of sewer service charges to the sewer debt fund, 758, and declaring an emergency. Finance and personnel. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this particular ordinance uh, follows up on the recommendation in the annual report made by Auditor Kathy Hecht that um, noted that we um, currently have a 28% and 72% split bet um, between the monthly sewer service charges. So 28 <laughs> currently goes to the sewer fund and 72% goes to the sewer um, excuse me, 72 percent for the operating budget. And uh, what we found is, is that it needs to be um, a little bit more money is needed in the operating for the sewer fund. Uh, that would give it a little more cushion. I think we only had about $3,600 left in the last version of the unappropriated um, uh, balances in the uh, sewer fund. So what this will do is uh, give a few more thousand dollars to the operating funds per year. Taking it from the debt fund. Correct. So shifting it from the debt fund uh -huh. over to the operations. And again, this is a recommendation of the auditor from her report that uh, usually we're, we're piling it up more in the debt fund than, than necessary. <clears throat> Ordinance 125, 129.12. Ordinance amending the 2012 appropriation number nine. Thank you, Mr. President. This particular ordinance takes care of two of our expenses um, towards the end of the year, and one of them is an appropriation that we need for an additional $800 for the general fund, and this represents the interest that we will be paying on on the um, <coughs> the fire truck purchase and uh, the amount that's due. Um, on the note that we borrowed to pay for that fire truck. The second one is for $12,885, and we discussed this in finance committee last week. The code office has made a request for a transfer of some funds um, unused in some accounts and could transfer it over to for a new filing system for the code, uh, the code office. Yeah. Oh. 
I would say and suspended, would, yeah. yes. Request the that you consider this under is, suspension of the, of the rules. Yes. Second. Uh, we have a, a motion and a second <coughs> to suspend the rules on Ordinance 129.12. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those same sign. Okay, the rules have been suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. I move adoption of Ordinance 129.12. Second. Second. And as described earlier, the $800 for the general fund for the fire truck uh, note, um, increasing that appropriation, and then also transferring um, $12,885 for a code office filing system. Okay. So we have now a motion <coughs> to um, pass ordinance, to accept Ordinance 129.12. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Same sign opposed. opposed. The ordinance is accepted. Ordinance 13012, an ordinance levying special assessments for sidewalk improvements associated with the Grosvenor Street project, number 238, and declaring an emergency. Member Nisley. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, this is the final in a series of ordinances that we have for sidewalk assessments or improvements to sidewalks, and the work has been completed. This particular project for Grosvenor Street encompassed $34,609 worth of repairs to the sidewalks. And we're now ready to move this forward now that the work's been completed. And Ordinance 131.12, an ordinance levying special assessments for sidewalk improvements associated with the North Court Area Infrastructure Project number 259 and declaring an emergency. Thank you, Mr. President. And the same with this. This was another area of improvements that we made this summer. And this is the North Court Street area. And as we were doing other infrastructure improvements to water and storm sewers, we also did the improvements to the sidewalks. And uh, the amount of the improvements that will be assessed now that the work's been completed is $46,068. Clarification, um, residents, citizens um, who own that sidewalk will be assessed for uh, the repair. Um, and we will have a special board that is, will be set up that they can come and ask for relief uh, from that from that debt. Um, and, but I think that was already done. Thank you, citizens, for um, so many of you uh, realize the importance of, of maintaining good sidewalks. Ordinance uh, 13212, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute a housing revolving loan fund, a housing revolving loan fund administration agreement with the state of Ohio, Department of Development, and declaring an emergency. I'm sorry, Member Nisley. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. This is a renewal of um, an agreement. Well, this authorizes the mayor to ex execute the Housing Revolving Loan Fund Administration Agreement. And this is part of our CHIP program for housing improvements made within the Athens community. Mm -hmm. Ordinance 13312, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into an administrative services contract with Hocking Athens Ferry Community Action, HAPCAP, to administer the Housing Revolving Loan Fund and declaring an emergency. Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, this particular um, uh, kind of corollary ordinance, if you might call it, um, it gives then the, uh, the mayor the authority to make sure that we have the administrative agreement with the state of Ohio for um, these funds for the housing loan fund. This is with HAPCAP. The, the first one was with the state. This one's with HAPCAP. HAPCAP. But they're both, as you say, they're related. One's the administration, one's the actual uh, CHIP grant. We talked about this last time a little bit. It's an ongoing program for housing improvements for low and moderate income. And 
a while ago this evening, we um, added an ordinance to our agenda, Ordinance 134.12, an ordinance authorizing the adoption of a three-year agreement with the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, Local 2403-2, and Ohio Council 8, AFL-CIO, concerning wages and working conditions and declaring an emergency. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we have received information and uh, thank the uh, persons who were involved in the negotiations. This is a renewal, renewal of a, th or it was a negotiation for uh, a three-year contract. It will be effective uh, back to October 7th, 2012, and will be effective through October 3rd, 2015. And these are for our five employees in the code office. And um, of the three years, uh, there were 2% raises um, negotiated for each of the three years, pay increases for that. The other changes that happened to the, the contract, which um, uh, we reviewed in executive session, is, is that the FMLA language has been clarified, and then also the injury leave language in, uh, within the contract has been clarified. And so, yes. uh, <coughs> moving this forward for, for approval. I'm just looking at the personnel director, sir, anything to say at this point? Do we need emergency clause in this? Well, we're, we are going to ask the auditor's office how much time they need in terms of, because this is retroactive. And um, President Sands, you participated. It was kind of, took a while to get where we are, but we're comfortable with where we are in terms of reaching the agreement. So we can go forward for the next three years. And thank you all for doing it, President, and you too. You worked hard at it. Okay. Announcements and other business. Uh, we are having a special session at um, next Monday uh, where we will read all of these ordinances that were introduced tonight, uh, past the ones that were at second reading, and um, possibly accept some ordinances uh, that, that need suspension. Um, do we have committees that need to, to meet? Uh, planning and development. Planning and development. Um, anybody else? I, I think we can do this under your committee, but we'll have to look at the AEP uh, right away contract. Sure. So I talked to. That's fine. Just to add that to yours. Okay. Um, so we'll have plan, uh, planning and development. Anybody else? I'm not aware of any needs at the moment, but I will check in with the public works okay. director as yeah. well. If um, the need comes up, please um, let the clerk of council know so we can add that. Um, we will be meeting at 7 o'clock. Um, that we will take care of the uh, special session first and then have committee meetings. Sounds good. Okay. Um, now we have an opportunity for citizens to speak on legislative items and city services that were not covered on the agenda. Do you have people who would like to speak to us tonight? No? Then we are adjourned.